Everyone, put out sound on to the At The Bench update. So, it's been about a week, I think, since our last one. Um, loads of good feedback in the last video. I think I was all over the shop last week, so I think a few people enjoyed that. Uh, a bit more awake today. Um, so, the skyline's done. As you can see, it's just there in the display case. Um, it went together okay. Decals were great. Paint went well. Bit of a boring kit for me. A little bit of an older kit. Didn't really keep me interested as much. But it's done, it looks okay. There's a few flaws on it, I'm not happy with, but hey, it's just one of those. It's an older Tamiya kit, they're not the best. Um, yeah, but it's done, so it's one of those. Um, as I said the other day, I've started a new buddy build with myself and Sam, and a few people in Iceland have joined in, which is great. And that is uh, GT, GTR class racing cars. Um, so anything from the GT class or GTR racing class, uh, road racing, more than likely you're fine to do it. Just because it says GT in the name doesn't mean you can do it. It has to be a part of those racing classes. I'm doing the 911 GT3R in the uh, Scuderia colour, uh, which has turned out really well. We'll go over ahead and have a little look at it in a minute. Um, happy with that. I test out the new 2K clear coat as well yesterday for the first time. And it looks alright, but we'll chat about that in a minute. Um, so plenty of people joining on that. Sam's building a BMW Z4, which is looking well from Fujimi. So brilliant. And I'm sure myself and Sam uh, will pick uh, another one to do as well. I think we're thinking of doing the Tamiya Arta NSX to do. Um, I think that's what Sam wanted to do. So I think that might be the next build. That's a beautiful kit and car as well. A um, couple of things to talk about. Yesterday I released a video on um, Sanders. Over the past, ooh, where are we, 12 months or so, I've seen people absolutely butchering our Sanders on camera. Uh, pictures, YouTube videos everywhere, and I've been meaning to this video for quite some time. Something I saw that the day I was directed to prompted me into getting it done, uh, and I did. I did it yesterday, so hopefully that'll help clear up any confusion on the grits, when to use, how to use, how not to use, and yeah, hopefully that'll help a few people. One thing I will say about that, and this is just common sense, shall we say, if you have a problem with a company, be it Vauxhall. Chrysler, UMP, Lego, whatever. When you have a problem, contact the company first. Let the company rectify the problem. We've got very good customer service at UMP. If you have an issue, we will sort it. Don't go public <laughs> statement problems. Let the company try and deal with it first. That, that, that's the fairest way of doing it. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. This is named to anyone in particular. It's just a general thought i see it day to day over loads of companies where people rant about the company and people say have you contacted the company no right well that would be my first case in point you have a problem contact the company they fix it you get done everyone's happy that's the best way of doing it so if you ever have an issue of anything ump contact uh, lee at sales up retail.com that's the email address or even contact me uh anything at all just contact you've got any questions queries email us contact me I'll answer your questions, and yeah, that's the way to do it. It's the fairest way, that, that, that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Like I say, it's not aimed at anyone, I don't want anyone moaning or backlash about this, it's just a general statement about customer service, and that's it. So yeah, if you want to go look at that video, it was up yesterday, I'm going to do one decal as well, and on your solutions, I have a test subject already sprayed up ready, uh, I just keep getting distracted in doing it, so I'm going to do that on the new decal solutions, so if anyone's confused about those, which I think a few people are, um, we will cover those. I'm hoping today it's done this week. Just going to take a little bit of time that one because it's been a mucky amount to get it done. So that's that. Right. Um, F1 build. I asked for some pictures uh, last week after the last bench update. I have a few. We'll go through those in a minute as well. Um, some great finishes. I don't think everybody who finished put a picture up. There's not much I can do about that really. Uh, I did ask for anyone who finished to put a pick up. So we'll go through those in a little bit. Like I said, we've got this GT build on the go. If you want to join in with that, please go over to ISM Facebook or the forum or even the comments down below. If you've got any questions, ask me and we will sort it out for you. Another thing as well, uh, Walter uh, Von Voren. If I've butchered your name, buddy, I'm very, very sorry. Uh, left a comment last week and somebody on my Paul ISM page asked a question as well about seeing the rest of my cave. Uh, you only ever see that way. Um, there's another three or four foot that way as well and loads of stuff that you can't see you don't want to see more of the cave and I'm happy to show it I love my cave and I'm more than happy to show it so I've got a few pictures of those as well so when we go to have a look at the Porsche we'll come back and go straight to looking at the 
uh, open wheel racer finishes, and a few picks on McCabe as well. Um, that's it. If you don't look at them, skip past it and move on. It doesn't bother me. It's one of those things. Right, so the Skyline. Let's have a little chat about that. I've got a few picks. I haven't got many today. Uh, I didn't take all that many of this kit. And I was critiqued on my pictures. Oh, no. About the background being too dark. I'll be honest, because of the kit and how I was feeling at the time, I just took some pictures, edited them very, very quickly, shoved them up on Facebook and let it go. Um, I don't really care, to be honest. They're, they're a little bit dark and I'm not really all that bothered. But anyway, this is Tamiya's uh, 124 Skyline R32. Uh, it was a HKS scheme in the original boxing, but I added the SK decals for the Castro scheme, and I had the correct wheels. Frank at SK very, very kindly sent me the correct mirrors, as well as another set of wheels. So thank you very much, Frank. I don't know who watches my videos, but thank you very much anyway, buddy. So kits completely out of the box, bar those uh, decals and mirrors. Uh, so it's not completely out of the box at all, but anyway, that's what we say, isn't it? Um, Prime UMP Y Primer, base coat in Tamiya TS26. I sadly did have a bit of bleed through of the black plastic. It was a black plastic body. I should have primed or painted silver to block it, but I didn't. And it did get some black through, which is many of the reason I kind of lost interest in the kit. My own fault, uh, my head wasn't fully in it, uh, but it's just one of those things. Luckily, most of it was on the edges where the window rubbers are, and you can't really see it at all. So thankfully, that was great. Um, SK decals went on flawlessly as they always do. Absolutely lovely decals. Clear coated in um, Pro Range 2K Clear. I gave it a Tamiya panel line wash. Uh, like I say, the rims are from the Castro kit. Um, polished it with Micromesh 12,000, Novus um, Fine and Tamiya Finish Compound. And give it a wax up with the Tamiya wax. Uh, wheel centers sprayed in Tamiya TS14. The outer edges are the standard chrome out the kit. Um, and that's it, really. So, yeah, it looks good. It's, it's a nice-looking car, but just a kit. It just didn't really grab me as much as some of the other kits do. Um, so, a little bit sad, but, hey, that's where it is. Uh, and that's where we're at now. So, there we go. That's that done. Enjoying this Porsche, though. This thing's looking really well. Like I say, we'll go over and have a prop look in a minute. And that, uh, that clear came out quite well. Whether it's worth the added cost, which I'll chat about in a minute, I don't know, but it did come out well. It's uh, got a nice finish on it. And I've made some more room in the display case as well, which you'll see in a bit when we look at the pictures of the cave. Right. Let's go and have a look at um, Porsche. How we're getting on with that. Then we'll come back, we'll look at the open wheel racer finishes, some pictures, and we'll look at my cave and then come back and wrap it all up. Right, okay. We're going to be very quick here because all I've got to show you really is a body spoiler and some wing mirrors. Everything else for this kit is uh, in the spray booth, all the chassis components, um, under trays, etc., splitters, they're all painted up at the minute, so they're black. Black and white, there's not much to show. Roll cages all assembled, uh, floor pan, uh, interior is all done as well. Every other part is cut off the sprue in a little tub at the minute, waiting to be cleaned up and primed uh, as soon as I've done this video. For now, this is where we're at. This is Fujimi's 24 scale uh, 911 GT3R. I chose the Studio 27 um, decals for the Scuderia car. Um, so this was primed in Tamiya Pink Primer. I want to try that again. Not bad. Still think the um, UMP white pri uh, yellow primer works better. Now, I originally painted this in uh, TS8, and I thought it was too dark. So I stripped it back with Mr. Leveling Thinner and sprayed it in TS49. So to strip it back with the Leveling Thinner, um, I'm loading up my airbrush, the Apex with it, spraying a light coat all over it, let it sit a minute, and then grabbing a toothbrush, dipping it in some level thinner, and brushing it all over. And after a bit of work, it will take the paint off. Uh, decals, a lot all come off. It's safe for the plastic, just be careful. I've noticed on some of the Hasegawa kits, it can make the plastic brittle. Just be careful with that. Um, so I get most of it off with the toothbrush, and then load up the airbrush again. Jet wash it off, literally jet wash it all off, let it dry, wipe over some UMP airbrush cleaner just to kind of get all the level and thinner off, let it sit and dry, and then start again. It's that simple. Um, so, yeah, um, priming this second time around, priming the pink primer again from Tamiya, uh, Tamiya TS49. Studio decals, 27 decals were awful, and I mean really bad. The decal solutions had to go to town on them with the extra strong. 
and yeah they were not good at all this one here no chance getting that one to set it just it was all over the place and the roof one although i measured it perfectly it just didn't sit straight at all no idea what was going on there so i took them off when i um, stripped the paint off the first time and these were masked and painted so all that's masked and painted did a pretty good job on that roof very happy with that and the one over the, the hood or bonnet if you're from the uk that one went on really well as well very happy with that minimal bleed through uh, which i took back uh, az tape and it's money there and on the roof as well but those studio 27 decals were not good and sadly the other two sets i've got for my other cars are the same Ugh. Um, basically the studio 27s are made by a lot of companies uh, they can be cartograph um, there's another company is it umi or uni can't remember now they seem okay these ones were unlabeled and they're the ones i've had trouble with before but ump decal solutions did tame them but it took quite a bit of work to get them on uh, on there um like i say this is the splash new 2k clear they've just brought out they've had formulated for them by a chemist um i'm not sure how actually accurate that is i don't know when you go on what i've been told so this is a three to one solution three part clear to one part um hardener uh through the mp apex 30 psi one semi wet uh tack coat and then two wet coats it's a lot thinner than uh, any of the other 2Ks I've used before. Um, and I did go a little bit heavy on the bonnet, uh, which will rectify when we sand it. Um, so yeah, in future, I would just go a little bit lighter uh, on that, but not much we can do about it now. It's on, it's done, but I will flat it back uh, with the old micro mesh, uh, wet and dry, and get it really nice and flat and shiny. But yeah, the shine's good out the gun. Now, I've always said that if it's a vast improvement, I would pay the extra cost to use it. Now, I would say out the gun, now this is cured, this is over 24 hours now, so this is probably very nearly cured. I haven't tried the nail test yet, I'll leave that for a couple more days. It was marginally better out the gun than the Pro Range that I normally use. Um, now, the main problem with this now is the cost. This comes in a 30 ml bottle of um, the clear and a 10 ml bottle of the hardener, and that's £9.50. I get a litre of the Pro Range, the clear, half a litre of the hardener, and 250 ml of the thinner. This doesn't need thinner to splash uh, for £20. So this works out roughly depending on just how um, thick a coat you put on. Um, this works out about £3 per car. Which, if it was worth it, I'd pay quite happily. Whereas the Pro Range works at 20 pence. So, it's immeasurably, not immeasurably, but it's immensely different. Uh, Cost-wise, so for me, that little bit, it's literally a fraction better out the gun. I can get a very similar finish from the Pro Range. And I think for me, I'm going to stick with my Pro Range. Um, the beauty of this, if you're one of the people who doesn't like to look around with the thinning ratios, you literally mix the two together and away you go. It's very thin though. I have got a couple of runs. I've got one on the lower edge of the sill I'm going to have to attend to. And I've got quite a big one on the front of the bonnet as well I'm going to have to attend to as well. First time using it, you know, first use, you, you, you need to adapt the way you spray. And I'll admit any mistakes I make. But out of the gun, it's a good finish. It is a good finish, but... Is it worth, oh my god, what is it, like 15 times the cost of what I'm using now? In all honesty, for me, I'm going to say no. But everyone else made their own choice up. I know Claire's got some to test and a few other guys have. I know Ed's getting great results of it as well. So it's personal choice. But for me, I'll stick with what I've been using for the past year and a half now. Um, but you never know. We'll see. I'm going to let it harden up. The, the big test is the nail test. Even the Pro Range takes quite a while to fully cure. Um, I'm going to try this um, probably tomorrow. If you're going to do a nail test, I always clear coat under all the sills and all the back end. Pick an inconspicuous area you can't tell. Once you think it's cured, push your nail into it and your nail shouldn't easily go into the finish. Um, if it does, it's not properly cured. Uh, Carlos, my buddy Carlos Starton, um, informed me on that. Sorry, I've waffled on for ages about this. I really do apologise. Um, but that's where we're out of it. So yeah. Try that 2K. If you tried it yourself, let me know what you think. And uh, I will see how this all polishes up. And we'll have a look. Um, didn't mean to waffle for that. <laughs> about that, sorry. Uh, spoilers all done as well. A carbon decal that. 
uh, that's not bad at all and the wing mirrors are done as well so yeah that's where we're at with that like i said didn't mean to waffle that long but i'm just trying to get a lot of information out there uh, it's a pretty color i'm glad i changed the color it's a bit more vibrant um yeah so that's where we're at with that so there we go right let's go and have a look at some of the open wheel racer finishes okay so we're over on ism facebook where i finally remembered and asked for pictures of everyone who took part in the uh, open wheel buddy build sig can i put a question a uh, picture of their finished build in comments um now i don't think everybody has to be honest i think we're missing a few i think a few people did manage to finish so if you did take part and did manage to finish still well done it's a good effort and hopefully we'll see your finished builds soon on the facebook page so first of all we've got mr robert benson if that is your real name <laughs> And he's finished his 1986 Tamiya uh, F111 Williams. And he's done a very, very good job of that. Um, I know for a fact he managed to wrangle, um, I think they were the original Tamiya decals on that. Um, and he did an absolutely superb job. It's lovely. Very nice detail on the engine as well. Uh, a top job there, Jim uh, Bob. Um, so well done, mate. Congratulations. It's a sterling build. Absolutely lovely. I love that car iconic car oh i clicked off the bill give me a sec we'll go back there we are that's better uh mr adam alan aaron andy height um completed his ebro 120th 2015 mclaren mp430 um this library is only used for testing up to the spanish grand prix he's quite happy with the build now looking back but was a little bit disappointed when it was finished uh supposed to be a mojo builder became a pain um uh, it's finished it in zero paints mclaren west colors with pro range 2k used on top and nice work uh alvin the top job there mate i like the base as well finishes it off and uh, well done mate uh congratulations for finishing uh i know you struggled over a bit but you got there in the end well done andy uh we've got digsby who finished turn it the 24 scale protar ferrari 126 c2 turbo uh painter for leo modeler taliri and tamia it's his first f1 open wheel yeah, he really enjoyed the build. The kit decals were toast. The Shinka decals to the rescue. Uh, though, uh, he chose Gilles Villeneuve's car. Uh, it's always been his favourite F1 driver. Uh, the model was clear coating Tamiya TS13. Uh, scratch belt details, sparkle wires, distributed cap plumbing, gear shift and linkage replaced with brass rod. Uh, car also has wire harness to the rear of the dash, cables to the pedals, etc. Oh, very nice. Uh, still a lot to learn and looking f uh, enjoying the journey. Thanks for taking a look and for all the encouragement and support I've received as well. It's a top job there, mate, as well. And again, I like your little uh, base you've got there as well. That looks very cool. Good looking Formula One car. Very, very nice. Well done, Digsby. Uh, Mr. Scott Hastings. Oh, I don't know where that picture's off. It's off on holiday somewhere. Click on it. There we go. Um, he finished a 124th Heller Talbot Lego uh, Grand Prix car. An absolutely great job on that. That would not have been an easy kit at all. Um, Hella kits are now being a bit of a nightmare. And he's even got a figure in there as well. Great job there, Scott. Uh, I think the engine cover comes off to show the engine. Why wheels look good. Top job, mate, on what was probably not an easy kit at all, mate. Well done. I like the figure as well. Nice little touch. Dan Edmonds finished the Tamiya uh, F2001-2002 uh, early season. Uh, it's Michael Schumacher's car, a uh, 20 scale kit from Tamiya. And Dan, did, again, did an absolutely superb job there. Lovely work, Dan. Very clean and crisp. Very, very nice, mate. Well done. Uh, Malcolm Plum managed to finish the uh, Tamiya Jordan Ford 191 in the 7-up scheme. And again, absolutely superb work. Very, very clean build. Tires are lovely there, Malcolm. Very, very clean, de-seamed. Very, very nice. Great decal work, great paint job, and a nice clear coat as well. Well done, mate. Congrats. Uh, and Mark Hawkins, he's calling this done. Uh, let me see if it'll play it. It does. Let's see if I can click on it and make it bigger. I can. Uh-oh, we're not in HD. Let's have a look. Rock roll. It's not quite HD, unfortunately, but Facebook does um, kind of start. Oh, there we go. I'll cut off a bit. Very nice build. He's got the cowlins off the back showing all the engine. And a great job there. Well done, mate. So I'll go back and read what he's done. But yeah, top work there, buddy. Well done. Uh, so Mark um, has built, let me see, uh, Tamiya's Honda RA272. Assume it's the 120th kit. 
uh, efficient zero paints, uh, all the colors of Mr. Hobby Aquis, all on UMP black and white primers, pro finishes with the Molotov pens, uh, really good and interesting build, taking just over two weeks. Uh, the first completed build for breaking or losing a part of the carpet monster. Although there was a heat, I think it means heart stopping moment, when he dropped a wheel and tire, which my wife found under a cabinet seat. Very, very handy having a fresh pair of eyes looking for lost parts. I do that all the time. And you'll sit there looking for some for half an hour and they'll find it in two seconds. So there we go, another top job. So some great finishes there. Like I say, not everybody's there who finished. I know that for a fact. Um, I think people are still working on them. So if you do finish them off, put pictures up. Uh, we'd still like to see your finished build. Well done to everyone who took part and completed. Sadly, I didn't take part. I was a bit distracted at the time. Uh, <laughs> apart my own buddy build, didn't even take part. Um, but hey, you guys and girls out there enjoyed it. And that's all that matters. So there we go. Well done, everyone, for taking part. Right, let's go have a look at my man cave. Okay, so my man cave. We travel back to around about ooh, June 2012. Uh, we had our garage demolished due to tree root damage, which left an absolutely fantastic foot deep concrete foundation. You see my Labrador's inspecting the recently demolished work. New fences. Um, that is the shell to my workshop. I had uh, pre built for me to my dimensions and sizes, pre cut for the doors. Um, as you see, it fits perfectly on that concrete base, nice and secure. And it's on a level of engineer bricks with a damp proof course on top. As you see inside, it looks a lot bigger inside now that there's nothing in it. Uh, I paid extra for this. That actual bare shell cost me £1,300. Um, I paid extra for thicker wood, um, thicker beams, thicker joists, proper tongue and groove roof and floor. As you can see, this isn't your normal garden shed. This is a proper workshop. They are 25mm uh, TNG um, wood with, uh, yeah decent uh <laughs> it weighed a ton let's just say that so two blokes a lot of time to get it in there's my double glazed window and security door in place that security door is 14 point locking uh solid well solid steel but steel insulated very very nice door that cost me a fair old whack of money but it's nice and secure um i fully insulated the inside with i think it's 40 mil in the walls and 50 mil in the ceiling with the appropriate air gap and then foil sealed. I didn't skimp on this at all. It cost me quite a lot of money to do. Um, but six years later, the benefits were well worth doing. Um, both sides are done. I added some steel over the windows. Um, as a deterrent more than anything. And just in case anybody fancy trying to get in. Taking a little bit longer. They've got to break the window. Make a load of noise. Then try and get through that. It'll slow them down. Just a little bit of precautionary there. As you see, insulated the floor. Again, in 50 mil um quintherm insulation boards and again foiled to seal all the gaps in there as well and again worked wonders i'm barefoot in here a lot of the time and my feet are never cold it's lovely and warm in here as you see we've got some osb board up at the back to cover all the insulation the electrics are in some of the cupboards are in and the tng cladding on the roof is in place i did all this work myself other than the bare shell and actually Connecting the electrics, I did everything else. I put all of them in place. Some worktops in place now as well. Um, I did this in January 2013. It was freezing. I was Baltic, but I took my time. It took about six weeks in total to get it all done, and well worth all the effort. 13 double sockets in here, electrical sockets, and you might think that's a lot. Everyone was used constantly, bar the one on my bench you'll see in videos quite often, uh, and what have you. Um, some of the paint racks in, some overhead lighting, some shelving in as well, um, and a sink. I originally put a sink in thinking I use that sink a lot. I barely used it, so in the end I took it out and used it as storage instead. Facing the other way as well, outside the window now. Uh, that's where the spray booth will be eventually. And as you can see, really coming together now. All the cladding's up, skirting's up, all the woodwork's in, and we're ready to start filling it up. This is the exterior, as you can see, all treated, looking a lot better now. You can see all my pipework and cable in the tin place. That was then boxed in and insulated. Um, hot, cold, running water, heating from the house, um, Ethernet, phone line, everything there um, for the connections to the house. The roof, I got rid of the felt roof, and well, it's still there, but I put some of the bitumen corrugated roofing on top. And again, no issues to this day, absolutely perfect, and still looking great as well. A lot of money. 
but well worth the extra expense uh, to cover it. This is how it looked originally back in 2013. A lot different to how it looks now, as you'll see in a minute. Um, not as much stuff in there as I've got now. Different paints, Vallejo's, what have you, which I've got rid of now. Extra acrylics again, which have gone. And just a bit of a different layout. Uh, again, spray me from the corner, my dogs, which sadly I only have the Jack Russell now. My two German Shepherds and Lab have sadly gone. Um, and I do miss them immensely. They're all lovely dogs. But yeah, I've still got the Jack Russell. He's still going strong. And that's how, again, it looked in 2013. So skip forward to 2019. This is how we look now. Uh, a lot fuller, a lot different. Um, the only thing that hasn't stood up to time in here is the carpet. Um, that is literally white tack on the floor. Uh, that's been mowed over by the chair, mushed into the carpet, and it's just got gone black over the years. It's impossible to get out, and I'm not really bothered. It was a £20 carpet, really heavy, um, off-cut that I got, and I'll replace it at some point if I deem it necessary. So that's how it looks now, as you can see, with the chair out of the way. You see all the paints, kits, Lego, etc. Um, it's perfect size for me. Could do with being a little bit bigger, but I've made use of every piece of space in here, and I'm more than happy how it is. So this is my workbench, as you can see on the left, some sundries, my weather station, some of the little bits and bobs my little boy gives me, figures and what have you, and a few bits of my own that I put up on top. That's the Pro LED lights from the Daylight Company there. I've got two of those. You can get those on Amazon. Uh, we go to the right-hand side. There's my Apple iMac. Boo! Just got that, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, my Blue Snowball mic. Uh, some more paint in the background as well. Um... And yeah, and that, that's where the camera sits on the live show and the bench updates on top of there. Uh, behind that, we've got my Hobart Hyper VSE uh, 1 8 Rallycross car, uh, RC car, some LEGO Speed Champions, my Porsche 911 RSR, BB 8, some Zero paints, uh, Tamiya and Badger Minotaur paints as well. To the right of that, we've got Star Wars Lego, some Ultimate Collector series, some other bits and bobs, some more of my stash, the top of my lego saturn 5 rocket uh and some of my bar as well the bar needs dust and somebody said this the other day oh never ending battle with dust in here because of the area it is and what have you it's just a never ending battle my other small display case that's nearly full now uh, my pro boat uh geico 29 and recall 26 i've got another boat in the house as well love my rc boats um, absolutely fantastic the very important fan which keeps the air rotating in here and that's the area behind that you never normally see on camera um, that's it some stash at the top uh, pictures up on the ceiling i've got all sorts up there um, and that's it really so like i said that's behind that's where you normally don't see because the camera never faces that direction it normally faces this direction a bit higher up than usual uh, but that's the the area you normally get to see on camera uh, so my display case, which I made a little bit more room in. I've got room for about another eight cars, so about a couple of months' work. After that, I've no idea what I'm going to do. Stickers on the door as well, which I'm trying to fill up slowly. Uh, we've got some more Lego, some Lego Creator, Catrum, Aston Martin, Mustang, F40. My new Batman doormat, my little boy chose the other day. And by the radiator, that's my heating, is a Type 23 frigate brass shell a friend gave me many years ago. The other display case, like I say, that's getting slowly filled. Space for one more car. We've got a few various kits in there. That's a little display case. I got cheap off Facebook Marketplace. Brand new for £15. So I thought, might as well make use of it. And this is my spray boost. This is the other side of the way the camera faces normally. It's my A300S spray booth. My work area, uh, paint, decanted paints, bottles, outclads, extreme metals so on and so forth, uh, and drawers for storage there too. This is the other side, you see all my primers, metal paints are regularly used, decanted paints are ready to use, so on and so forth, airbrushes, airbrush station, cleaning brushes, thinners, etc. A couple of my paint masks up top, Good my Darth Vader respirator. Some more of my stash, the stash is all over the place in here, there's about 160 kits in here, would you believe? Um, there's some in that cupboard to the left, and there's a cupboard over on the right-hand side you'll see in a second. But these are primarily uh, Tamiya kits. Over on the right, there's more stash in that cupboard behind the Saturn V Lego rocket. There's my little bar there that drastically needs dusting. only did about a month ago uh, with the painting and everything that goes on in here. It does get dusty quite quick, and it's a never-ending 
battle. Uh, behind the iMac now, we've got the uh, RC car again, my 1A Rallycross car, which is great fun. 4.5 kilos is about 40 mile an hour and is mental. Got some more paint supplies and sundries behind there too. Um, some spare paints, glues, etc. And then we've got my iMac itself and the regularly um, used tools in all those little cups there as well. Um, so Sunday's up on top. Like I said, the iMac there, that's where the camera sits. You can see my webcam up on the paint rack as well from in the Hangouts. Um, just above the lamp. Pro LED lamp from um, Amazon, from Daylight Company. Sundries up above, glues, decal solutions, etc. Like, so all my most used tools are in those cups there, mostly Tamiya and UMP Sanders. And then to the left again, uh, we've got a weather station, UMP printed products, sundries, toothpicks, cotton buds, etc. And all my little knickknacks up on top as well. So there we go. That's my man cave. Ta -da! There we go. All done. Um, so yeah, interesting as you can see, we've got some great finishes in that open wheel racer build. Porsche is looking well, the cave was nice and tidy, still is to a degree, but it's a working, it's a studio, this really, and it does get used, so it doesn't always stay completely spotless. There are kits on the floor at the minute that I'm working on, they were taken out for the pictures. Um, uh, but on the general, it is kept clean. A lot of people criticize me for keeping it too clean, but I don't live in a shit tip, I don't need to live in a shit tip. Um, yeah, so why? It's on camera. You don't want masses of crap all over my bench in camera shot. And I don't want to do that. I like working in a nice, clean environment. And, you know, I do a lot of modeling. I better do more modeling than a lot of people out there. So it is used. Well, it really is. So there we go. Um, we'll be back. Hopefully, in a few days, I'm going to do that decal video. I'm going to try my best to get it done. Um, we're back tonight with our live show. Sadly... Uh, because Tim's moving at the minute, he's not going to have a chance to do Tim's latest kits, um, the releases he does. Um, so it's a nice, it's going it's to be another build night. We'll just do a build night where we can sit and relax. So hopefully Tim's going to join us because I think he's moving into his new home today. So hopefully he's got all sorted. That would be good to see him with us. Um, but yeah, it's just a build night tonight. Hopefully next week we'll be back to normal. It's just one of those things. We have private lives. We have things going on. And they do interfere sometimes. It's just one of those things. The what you've been buying posts up. Dan's posts up as well. So you can go show us what you've been buying. You can go show us what you've been building as well. We'll still do those. But tonight's going to be a build night. And hopefully I'm going to work on the Dotty May a little bit uh, on camera tonight. Um, so yeah. Um, that's it really. Um, if you've got any comments or questions. Pop them in down below and I'll answer them for you. Um, and yeah. That's it. That's where we're at. So there we go. As always, check out umpretail.com. We've got loads of stuff on there. We've got a new stock of bikes due in next week. Uh, quite a few road bikes due in and a couple more racing bikes due in. We're going to add some armor soon, hopefully, as well. Uh, we've got a restock on all the other Tammy products, UMP. We're still waiting on our uh, primer and airbrush orders to come in, and a lot of people are eagerly waiting. A little bit more patience. Hopefully, it'll be with us in the next 10 days. Really do. Uh, but just to bear with us. It will be in soon. As soon as it's in, we'll let you know. And we'll get all, um, hopefully get all your orders in. <laughs> um, it's just one of those, really. It's just a bit of a delay. Sadly, not much we can do. Um, check out Inter Scam on the Facebook page and forum. Uh, our free Facebook page and forum that are all easy to sign up for. Well run, well looked after. Um, check out the Offer Hangout group for the Offer Hangouts. Check out the Live at the Bench page for all the live show news. And check out my poor ISM. Facebook page for all my modelling related progress. And of course, check out Monks for Heroes too. A very worthwhile charity. We really enjoy doing uh, work, fundraising for, basically. And there we are. So I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.